In this session, we'll discuss how to perform a network installation of Inventor 2011 from the disk media itself. Before you begin your installation, here are some things you may want to consider. Review the installation documentation. This is located on the DVD-ROM. Check to see if your system requirements meet the minimum requirements for Inventor 2011. Confirm the account you're using to install has full administrative privileges. Turn off any antivirus software. Disable this prior to installing the software. Export any existing shortcut keys from legacy Inventor products such as 2008, 2009, or 2010 Inventor. Also do the same for any custom application option settings. These can be exported to XML files. Prior to running the install, please close all running applications on Windows. Choose a language to install and locate your serial number and product key for the installation. One of the ways to get the product information, serial number and product key, will be from the electronic fulfillment email you receive from Autodesk. If you or your company do not wish to download the product and would rather have the product shipped to you, you will need to notify Autodesk through the Autodesk Subscription Center of this request. When the box is shipped to you, you will find the product key and serial number located on the plastic jacket that contains the software or on a sticker on the cardboard box which it's shipped in. Another area that you could obtain the serial number and the product key information would be to log on to the subscription center as your contract administrator and here you can select the product details. Before you begin your network installation of Inventor 2011, here's just a recap of what we talked about earlier. But what you will need to know is the server name. In order to do this, at the server, type in ipconfig forward slash all. This will list the name of the server. You will need this to obtain the licensing information. And the last thing you need to decide on is what server model you want to use. Single, distributed, or redundant. If you choose the single license server model, be aware that the license manager itself is only installed onto one server. You obtain a single license file. It's the easiest method to administer and maintain the server environment. If the server fails, no licenses will be available. A distributed license server model using this simply means you can distribute licenses across multiple servers. You need to obtain a unique license file for each server. Servers cannot be distributed across the WAN. And if one server fails, licenses are still available on the other server. If you choose the redundant license server model, you'll need to use three servers on one system one master and two backups. The same license file will be needed for all the servers. Provides a backup if one of the servers falls. It basically means if one of the servers were to fail, the other two operational servers will continue to distribute the licenses. They must be on the same subnet in close proximity. The installation dialog box will appear and from this interface you can install your products, you can create deployments, you can install tools and utilities, and you can read the documentation. One other thing you can choose is in this drop down if you had uh, language packs installed you could then install the different versions of the language. From the main page you simply now want to choose to install your products. The next screen that comes up is basically the Autodesk installation checklist where you can review your system requirements for 2011. You can see where the configure button is if you wanted to configure your installations, how you can disable your UAC, and what can and cannot be reversed after an installation. These links simply are links into our help system, which explains the specific topic. I'll select Next, and this brings us to the area to which we can select the products to install. The initial drop-down at the top is the language you want to install. If I had more language packs installed, you'd see more languages in this drop-down. Choose whether you want Autodesk Inventor 2011, the content center libraries for Inventor, whether you want AutoCAD Mechanical 2011, the Autodesk Material Library. This is for images for AutoCAD and AutoCAD Mechanical and is not for Inventor. And there's the options at the bottom for the vault and design review. Again, if you're unsure, you can click some of the links located here on the left and that will bring you to the help menu for that specific topic. The next screen you'll see is the license agreement screen. We ask all clients to read through this and then accept the license agreement to continue. The next screen you'll see is simply the user and product information screen. Enter your name and company name and then serial number and your product key to continue. 
After entering the user and product information, the next screen you'll see is basically a confirmation of the product that it's going to install. The serial number and the CD key will actually unlock the different version of Inventor that you have. In this case, it's professional. I'll say next. And the next screen you'll see is the begin installation screen. If you simply want to take the defaults of the system, you can choose install at this point and the product should start installing. If you want to configure, choose the configure button. Once you choose the configure button, the next screen will be the license type and in this case we'll select network license. This will install the network version of Autodesk Inventor 2011 as a network license. Once the network license option is chosen, for the license type, the next thing you need to determine is what type of server model you'd like to use. There are three different types of models. There's a single license server, there's a distributed license server, and a redundant license server. The most common is the single, which means one machine will host the license manager utility and dish the licenses to the clients. And simply here you can enter the name of the server that will host that uh, license manager. The next option would be choosing a distributed license server model. Here the licenses are distributed across more than one server. Uh, a unique license file is required for each of the servers and to distribute the licenses on each one of those servers you must have the network license manager installed on each one of those servers. It's as simple as adding the master system here and you continue to add other servers. If you choose the redundant license server model, this uses three servers, one acting as the master and two other servers as secondaries. If uh, the master by chance fails or really any one of these three servers fail, the other two uh, remain up and running, have access to all of the licenses. If you want more information on the different types of server models, I'll refer to the help links here uh, on the left. Once the network installation is configured, the next screen that pops up will be the option to select your preferences. Here is where you could set up your inventor to use the standard default look or closely resemble AutoCAD. Enable the part modifications in the Inventor IDWs. Uh, this is where the IDW dimensions can change or drive the model. The next option is the default uh, measure of units and uh, you have inches and millimeters and also down here at the bottom you can set a default drawing standard. Uh, this is for your IDWs to use by default. And the last option here is to create a shortcut on the desktop. The next screen that would appear would be the icon color theme, uh, cobalt uh, color will give you a whitish background on the icons that you see and you also have an amber color theme uh, that gives you more of a yellowish tint. The next screen you'll see is the uh, information for the content center. Uh, if you wanted to install uh, what they refer to as local content specific only to the machine or do you want to set up to use an ADMS vault server. This would be a multi-team environment where a collective group would be accessing one server for the content center file information. Again, you can refer to the links here on the left. The next screen that you will see is the installation type. You can select either typical or custom. If you choose custom, this is where you can deselect uh, some of the small utilities that are not loaded by the default. Obviously, if you choose typical, those will be installed. The bottom area here is the installation path. Uh, you could choose the default or you could browse to a different location. And the bottom area talks about the disk space required and the available disk space that you have. I'll go ahead and choose next. The next screen that pops up is the option to include the service packs. Basically after the installation of Inventor 2010, you can choose to install the service pack via Autodesk.com, our website, or if you had them downloaded to a network drive or a local drive, you could browse and add them into this area. There's also an option not to install the service packs after the network installation is done. In the next screen, it just simply tells you that the configuration is complete for the 2011 Autodesk Inventor, signaled by the check mark. If you want to configure the Content Center Library information, you now go ahead and click on that tab. In the Content Center Libraries tab, you simply check on the standards that you want installed for the installation. 
and at the bottom you could choose where these library files are going to be installed or accept the default path listed. And at this point the configuration for the content center libraries is complete. Now I'll go ahead and select the mechanical tab. In the first screen for AutoCAD Mechanical 2011 it's going to talk about the Autodesk Inventor link. This will allow AutoCAD Mechanical to link to an inventor part file or an assembly file for detailing purposes. Next will be the content library installation. Not to be confused with the content center libraries for inventor, this is the 2D content screws, nuts, bolts that AutoCAD Mechanical uses. And this option here will allow you to install it locally or if you want to pick up a shared location to choose that path. And the next screen will allow you to select the standards you want installed. Then down at the bottom it will allow you to choose the default standard. On this next screen will be the option to select a license type for AutoCAD Mechanical. The same uh, screens apply to what we just saw earlier in the Inventor 2011. If you choose the network license, uh, you will then have to configure for the different type of server model. Again, you would want to configure for the same server model that you did on the Inventor 2011 page. I'll go ahead and select Next. In the next screen, it's going to talk about selecting the installation type. You can choose Typical or Custom. Choose whether you want the Express Tools installed. If you choose Custom, it allows you to deselect the features you do not want installed. I'll choose Typical. Down the bottom, it's going to ask you to create a shortcut on your desktop. You have the option not to do that by unchecking this. The installation path, you can type in the new path here if you wish, or browse to an existing location. And at the bottom, it's going to talk about the disk space required and the available disk space you have. And the next screen talks about installing the service packs after the mechanical installation completes. You could do this from Autodesk.com or if you had them downloaded locally on your drive or in a network drive you could add them in this area and also there's an option not to include the service packs and at that point the configuration is complete for AutoCAD Mechanical you could hit configuration complete button and then go ahead and install the product